This is the video for our topic one, cycle two, learn. We're looking at acceleration in ninth grade physics. So in our lab today, we looked at the motion man and we looked at acceleration, so which is a change of speed. So let's see what that looked like in the simulation. So our motion man started movement in our first data set. And we can see that arrow represents his velocity. And notice that the size of that arrow is getting bigger, indicating his velocity is getting bigger. We can also see that the velocity is increasing by its value down here. And think about what our graphs look like. So now our position versus time, that looked very much like a straight line before, this blue line. And now we have a curve. Think about what the curve means about our slope. So a flat line down here is zero. So that's when the slope is at its least, or its velo his velocity is at its least. As, the, as he moves on in time over our x-axis, the change in position, so how far it goes up, remember the rise over the run, increases. So that means the slope's increasing or the velocity's increasing. And we get a curve. So with a change of motion, which we call acceleration, we don't have a straight line. We have a curve of some sort in our position versus time graph. We also have one new graph here, a velocity versus time graph. Similar to position versus time in that they both have time on the x-axis and labeled in seconds, but on the y-axis we have the velocity at every given time. So on this velocity versus time graph we have a slope, and that slope means that we have a change in motion because over time the velocity is going up. So here at zero seconds, he was not moving. At about six, it looks like at six seconds, he was going six meters per second. The fact that it's a straight line here means we have constant acceleration. Because if we looked at the slope of our velocity versus time graph, the rise is the change in velocity over the run, which is the change in time. And change in velocity over change in time is our formula or the relationship that defines acceleration, one of the relationships. So acceleration is a measurement of the rate of change of velocity, I should say. And like velocity, it's a vector quantity. Any quantity that you calculate using a vector becomes a vector quantity, meaning there's an amount, how much, and a direction. So direction matters with acceleration. Let's look at our second data set for the motion man. So notice our motion man is starting at a position of zero now instead of negative 10. You can see that that's going to start here at 0, 0 with our time axis if we looked at just the position graph. We also notice this arrow means he's starting with a velocity, and we see here that he's starting with a velocity of 3.5 meters per second. So let's see this graph and what happens with his motion that created that second data table we looked at in our Explore Lab. So we see him moving forward, but that arrow is getting smaller, meaning he's slowing down or accelerating in the negative direction. Oh, turns around just at about four seconds, or I'm sorry, at about four meters there, at the four meter mark, he's now going the other way and the arrow left is getting bigger and bigger. Now, <clears throat> when we look at him, so he started here at zero, zero. You can see as he moves through that graph, he's slowing down. Up here, we get to a slope of our position versus time graph. We just went past it there, where he is not moving for just a moment because there's no slope at the top of that graph. So my slope starts big and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That means that's a change of slope, which means a change of velocity since velocity was position over time and that rate of change, the slope is changing. We can also see down on velocity versus time, that's right where velocity intersects the x-axis because the velocity is zero. So over here, when he's moving the fastest, we have our velocity up here at three and a half meters per second, just under at this point, because we're just past where he started. And let's look what happens to the slope as he turns around and heads back the other way. So he's heading back the other way. Now he's going faster and faster the other way, and we can see the curve, the slope is getting, the value of the curve is getting larger and larger, and just in the negative direction. So we have a curve coming down. So he, this slope here in position versus time gets smaller, meaning he's slowing down or accelerating in the negative direction. 
because my slope is becoming smaller and smaller till he's not moving right here. And then it becomes more and more negative, meaning his rate of uh, mo his motion to the left is increasing. So he's accelerating left. And you can see that on my velocity versus time graph is that the velocity is changing a straight line down. Constant velocity on this graph would look like a horizontal line. So if we had constant velocity, so if I go in and put him in for a constant velocity of one meter per second, or let's do two meters per second, show my vector. Look what my velocity versus time graph looks like now. It's a flat line, so no slope, because there's no change in velocity. It's a horizontal line. Remember that on my position versus time for that constant velocity, we have um, it's constant forward, so we have a constant slope. So that's the key difference, um, is the slope is changing on a position versus time graph, and that there is a slope that's non-zero on my velocity versus time graph. And that's how you know you have accelerated motion, which is a change in motion, a change in velocity.